You call 911. Fair expectation that if you got an ambulance coming, they would rush you to the hospital. However, doing that could actually jeopardize a life when it comes to extreme heat illness. And that's where we're going to focus. National recommendations, they call for cooling patients first before transporting them. That's how MedStar Ambulance does it in Fort Worth. But environmental correspondent David Schechter found that most states don't even require that life-saving protocol. Lots of ice. When you stack up Matt Willens against most paramedics, he has one more life-saving tool for patients overcome by the blazing Texas heat. You're the ice man. <laughs> can I be Maverick or how are we gonna do that? You can be Maverick. Okay, cool. Matt carries that ice with him every day in case there's a call for heat stroke. I'm gonna be part of the crew here for a little bit and learn how they do this, how they cool a patient down on the spot. I count of three, one, two, three, up, and move over. I help Matt put the patient in a bag. We can start dumping this on him. Pour in water. Ice. Literally just dump the bucket of ice over Dump him. the bucket of ice on him. Pour in Matt's ice. Really, it's just like, it's very simple. Yes. Um, now we're, we're treating them in the field and making that difference. And that's could save their life. That is going to save their life. The protocol is known as cool first, transport second. The National Association of EMS officials recommends if a patient's core temperature is above 104, an ice bath immersion provides the most rapid cooling mechanism. Only after the temperature falls to 102.2 should the patient be transported to the hospital. It's a life-saving intervention that's more critical than ever as climate change makes our summers hotter and hotter. Tell me about, tell me about Zach. I love talking about Zach. <laughs> For his age, he was always very big and gentle and kind and funny. They called him Big Zach. And during football practice in 2017, Zach's body temperature hit 107 degrees. When the ambulance arrived, he was unresponsive and moaning. I just remember the panic that was setting in in that moment. Mm -hmm. They were just assessing him and then loading him up. To the instinct is, let's get to the hospital. Load and go. But when a patient is overheated, the national recommendation is not load and go. It's cool first, transport second. However, across the country, only 11 states require ambulance services to follow that life-saving protocol. Zach died from organ failure 11 days after he collapsed. His mom believes if cool first, transport second had been followed, he might have survived. You know, as a mother, that first heartbeat is really important to hear on the sonogram. I heard his last heartbeat too. I am Lori Giordano. I am Zach Martin's mom. After years of advocacy, Lori worked with the Florida legislature to pass what they named the Zachary Martin Act, a law requiring, among other things, on-site ice baths at all outdoor athletic events in Florida. But she's not stopping at high school sports. She wants all of the nation's ambulances to cool heat victims on the spot. If we can get the first response to be cool, then, then that's going to be where, where the lives are saved. In a world that's getting hotter, this is a life-saving solution that's not required in most of the country. Nothing really affects you until it directly affects you. David Schechter here with us. So we heard the state of Texas does not require the protocol. The understanding is Fort Worth does. Begs the question, what about Dallas, do they? Well, Doug, uh, Dallas Fire and Rescue told us that it does cool patients on site using ice packs and cold mist before transporting to the hospital. But cold water immersion, like you saw in that story that Fort Worth does, they do not do that on the scene. I wonder if that's going to change. And now I'm just going to play Captain Obvious for myself and maybe for everybody watching because they're all asking probably the same question. Why is there not some kind of national standard requiring this cool first and transport second methodology? It's a great question. You know, across the country, ambulance services, they are regulated at the state level. So even though it is recommended and it is the gold standard, it is still up to each side, each state to decide its own rules. Be interesting, especially, you know, going through the summer heat that we're going through now here, how this develops here in the state of Texas. David, thank you so much. CBS News environmental correspondent David Schechter tonight. Thanks,